morning, everyone. This is Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Seagull Network. I am so excited. We are going to be doing a special show today. So many special shows coming up. So I hope you'll tune in, join me for the next hour. It's got to be amazing. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Naomi Nachman. And I'm about all the food all the time. I love food. I love shopping for food, cooking for food, cooking with food, uh, eating at restaurants, anything food related. I'm a kosher personal chef, I'm a cookbook author, I run kosher chop competitions, I have so much fun, I have so much traveling all around food all the time. I love cooking, but I want to hear what you cook too, so send me an email, Naomi at NachumSiegel.com and share with me what you made and I'll share it with our viewers and what you made, where you ate, where you traveled, I love hearing from everyone. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest and on our Nachum Siegel net channel, um, on table for two with Naomi Nachman. <laughs> um, also my website, theaussiegomega.com. I think CK, did I cover all my bases? I always ask CK that wait, every week he gives me the thumbs up. Usually I leave like Pinterest or Twitter out. Okay, so uh, we have got an amazing show. We're actually doing another show. We're going to call it this a home edition. We had so much success and excitement from our challah that we did last week. We thought, Let's do a show from my kitchen, but a cooking show. So I invited my friend Shifra Klein, Joy of Kosher Magazine. You know, she always comes into the studio and she schleps all her stuff. And she's so amazing at that. And I'm like, Shifra, you don't have to go too far. Just come over to me and we're going to cook up a storm, but a healthy storm. And you'll be able to watch us cook and cook along with us right here uh, today on Friday morning. But on the phone, I have another amazing Nachum Siegel Network star herself, um, She's been on the show for about three years now, I want to say. And I have Jew in the city, Alison. Hello, Alison Joseph. Hello, Hi. Naomi. Hey, Alison, Jew in the city. You are like a big celebrity. I'm like so honored to speak with you. And when you joined the network, I was super excited. But we haven't had so much time to talk. And we finally got to schmoozing a little bit because of the Jew in the city event. And I said, you've got to come on table for two. So welcome. Well, if you ever, you love to shop and you love to cook, so if you ever want to come over here and do some of that with me, Naomi, that's an open invitation. Done. I think that will be so <laughs> fun. I'll come and cook at your house. We'll do Jew in the City at, um, at episode from your house cooking. Sounds good. All right, great. I love that. Teenick, we'll come all the way to New Jersey, somewhere in New Jersey, right? Cross that somewhere bridge. Somewhere undisclosed. <laughs> somewhere undisclosed location we'll find us cooking and eating like me always cooking and eating Alison um so talk to me how did you get started on this whole Jew, Jew in the city journey yeah so um really I think um to put it briefly Jew in the city um whose mission is to rebrand orthodox Jews and Judaism is really my tikkun for being raised to hate orthodox Jews um, I was raised as a proud conservative Jew and, um, you know, into Jewish food and Jewish humor and Israel and Holocaust awareness. Um, my, my parents said we had to marry only Jews um, and we did the high holidays, but I grew up with a real uh, negativity around the Orthodox community. I didn't know them personally, but I would read about them in the papers, which always captures the worst of the community. Um, I would right. see the you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I would see the characters on TV and movies, the, you know, the Hasidic Jew that never smiles, that always seems to be touching Chala or, you know, a talis. Um, and my father treated um, Hasidic Jews when he was doing his residency in Manhattan. And some of my youngest memories in life were him coming home and saying they're dirty, they're smelly, they're ignorant, they can't speak English. So... Um, his negativity certainly colored my negativity, and I thought of myself as an open-minded person, but I had really judged an entire population without ever meeting them. When I was eight years old, there was a tragedy in my life. A girl in the grade above me, um, her father went crazy, and he killed both his kids and himself. And Oh, my God. My, yes, my parents had done everything they could up to that point to build this happy, stable, loving, you know, privileged life for my two sisters and me, and they had been very successful. And then on a cold Monday morning in December in 1988, I walk into my fourth grade homeroom, and I find my classmates crying, and they tell me that Angela has been shot last night and she's dead. And, you know, the community was hit pretty hard, but I think it stuck with me a lot longer than it did with other people. Um, because this sort of launched me into this existential crisis of 
Well, my end could come when I least expect it. She was 10. Um, and where do you go when it's all over? And I realized, wait, no one ever talked to me about why we're here in the first place. How did that conversation ever come up? And my parents, to their credit, had life lessons for pretty much everything in life, how to be a good person, how to save money, how to have a good marriage. And somehow we had never talked about why we're here in the first place. But I was sure that they had an answer because, you know, I was eight and they were my parents. And when I asked them a few days later why we're here, they just stared back at me blankly. And I thought, oh, God, this is not good. And I went to friends, families, uh, teachers, and I quickly learned that no one actually knows why they're alive. And so this is a terrifying discovery to make at such a young age that people are basically staying so busy to never have to consider what they're living for in the first place. Um, and now at the time I had no idea that I was part of a tradition that has many ideas about what our purpose is here and many ideas on transcendent things in this world that um, we can do to you know, provide a meaningful life. Um, and it wasn't until I was 16 and I actually met an Orthodox Jew for the first time wow. at an after-school after Hebrew high program, which my parents sent us to in order to meet the nice Jewish boy we had to marry and eat <laughs> bacon cheeseburgers with him. Um, <laughs> I, was expe- I was expecting this man to be, you know, a rack to run women subjugating extremist, and to my shock, he was just a nice, normal human being who had something that I was missing. See, all along I had thought that Orthodox Jews had so much that they give up, and I found out that he had all the good things that my life had, and he had more. And so I slowly started making steps towards more observance. My family and friends thought I was losing my mind, Um, but slowly, slowly I got there, and I basically challenged my family first, and my father especially. Um, learn, Learn what I'm doing. Learn what I'm learning before you judge it. Um, and basically in an effort to stop me, um, I said, you don't have a right to an opinion until you've educated yourself. So if you want to save me and your unborn grandchildren, I was 16 when I said this, um, you'll have to learn so you can properly debate me. And so he began to study in order to try to stop me. And after about a year of study, at close to 50 years old, he came up to me one day and he said, I mocked it and I made fun of it. And it was under my nose this whole time. And now it's time to play catch up. And then he and my mother and both of my sisters all became from. So, um, so I started first on my family, and I really believed it was pretty obvious to me that um, the proof is in the pudding, that we have a great product, we're just doing a horrible job at marketing it, and people are making all these pre-judgments without knowing about it. In fact, we did a, a video on Jew in the City a few years ago with Manhattan Jewish Experience and Partners in Torah, where we took the green eggs and ham concept, we're oh. going to keep talking about food here, yeah, and we called the green eggs no ham. Um, and in a green eggs no ham, the character who was played by my friend Ethan Zahn, uh, oh, the I Jewish did... winner of yes, yeah, CBS yes, Survivor. I'm a huge Survivor fan. I watched the first yeah. 15 episodes. All right, he's one of my good friends. So, um, so he played the the character who has prejudged Torah learning and praying and Shabbos. And the JITC character keeps chasing him around like Sam I am and says, try it, try it. And he is convinced it's not for him. And she basically tells him, how do you know what you're rejecting if you don't try it? You're allowed to say no thank you, but at least try it first before you say it's not for you. And that's really um, what I hope that we're accomplishing with Jew in the City, that by breaking down the stereotypes that people have about Orthodox Jews and Orthodox Judaism, through social media, through videos, through articles, through, you know, a lot of basically all outreach organizations, none of them ever use the word orthodox. It's a bad word. So they they run from it. They get as far away from that word as possible. But then no one ever really knows about orthodoxy. So we run to the word orthodox because we want to reclaim it and rebrand it, which is why our tagline is orthodox unexpected. So we want people to take a listen and say, we are orthodox, but just... Open your mind for a moment because what you've heard is not the whole truth. Um, and we have to also acknowledge the challenges in our community and talk about ways to make them better. And we have to acknowledge the challenges in the Torah and what it means to grapple with, you know, mitzvahs or, you know, parts of the Torah that are harder to understand or harder to come to terms with. That that's okay. That that's it's allowed. You're allowed to be a thinking person. You're allowed to ask questions. Um, so that that's what we do. Um, and I think I've spoken for a while now. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Uh, first of all, I don't know if CK, you know, we have a, c- a camera on me right now um, because uh, my shows are uh, videotaped as well. 
Did you catch me with the crying? Okay, I was I was crying when you were talking about the loss of the girl in, from your school. I I I, I couldn't speak. I, I I was wiping my eyes. It was. Uh, your story is amazing and, and what you what bought what the tragedy that there was and, and, and what you've become is is unbelievable and how you've led us, all of us, even Orthodox Jews. I'm already Orthodox and you inspire me and So that's the that's the surprising thing that happened at Jew in the City that I thought that this message was going to be for non Orthodox Jews and we've reached non Orthodox Jews and people have sent us comments like I got to your site accidentally. I didn't think anything of it. And then I went back a few more times, and now I'm seriously considering becoming Orthodox. And, like, look, at the end of the day, I'm a big believer that everybody gets to choose how they live their life. Right. And this is meaningful to me, and I believe that it's true. But I don't get to say other people's truths. They get to decide that. Um, but I can't tell you how um, meaningful it is and how inspiring it is when someone who had prejudged Orthodoxy like I had actually gets a real look at it and says, wow, this is real value add. This is like the greatest Hanna I could imagine because they didn't reject it because they knew it. They rejected it sight unseen. They rejected it because of biases. So, so really my job and my mission and what I hope you know, that our organization will continue to reach right. is just to really get the message out to every Jew what it actually is. And so quite surprisingly, we have heard from countless Orthodox Jews who never got good explanations from mitzvot, who never got to ask questions, who never felt that they're doing this to, to live a meaningful life. It was a life about rules and, you know, this size and in this box and not in that box, as opposed to actually someone putting together a unified theory of, and you are a Jew because, and, you know, your life of observance and service of Hashem, you know, is meaningful because. So, um, that's tragic, um, and we're certainly happy to inspire people along the way. Of course, it makes me wonder, like, do we get you in the city curriculum into schools? I mean, I know schools that actually um, would be, use I, our videos. It's great. You know, what, you know what's really nice? That you're, you're sneers all the time, and you, you, you do a lot of events, and, and you're out there in the public. And when, when, like, when my girls were teenagers, now they're a little bit older, and they look to someone who's a, like a Jewish celebrity like you, and you're sneers, and you cover your hair, and you look beautiful and glamorous. It's something to show that from car, you know, sometimes being from and wearing a shade is isn't not frumpy, and it's cool right. and glamorous, and you are showing that cool and glam can be associated with from. So look, I think at the end of the day, um, people are shallow. Um, that's just most of us are, um, and we get drawn to shallow things. So um, we have quite um, on purpose, and we're very much aware of the choice that we've made, um, use things that are considered more shallow, like meaning how a person looks or dresses shouldn't actually matter. It should be, you know, what's inside of their head, what's inside right. of their heart. Counts. Right, but it's but, not only but, about how it looks, it's how, how you're covered, you know, whether... For sure, but so I'm saying, but we recognize that um, when things are put together nicely um, and packaged nicely, and you know, certainly getting back to the food theme, right. um, when food is presented nicely, um, it it's invites it's more inviting to explore. Right, you um, eat with your so, eyes. So that is that's been a conscious decision that we've made um, to use the the gashmias to lead people to ruchmias, um, okay. and I think it actually speaks to our All-Stars event, which is kind of the epitome right, so of this transition, model. Let's, let's transition a little bit into that. So the All-Stars event, um, in our effort to break down stereotypes about Orthodox Jews and really the videos that we made, and we're going now on, we just uh, celebrated our 10-year birthday, so wow, happy birthday years. to us. Cool. Yes. Um, so as I went through what videos I want to make, decides like, okay, how am I going to pay for this one? It was like, let me just think about everything that I got wrong. Let me think about everything that, you know, um, my family and friends accused me of once I became orthodox. And I, the goal was really to just make each video to confront each problem. So um, we had done a bunch, and then one of the ones that I knew I needed to tackle was that orthodox women are allowed to work. Um, when I worked at Partners in Torah for five years and spoke to 3,000 birthright alumni. Um, wow. I, I did a birthright yeah, trip. I, I ran a birthright trip. I, it was unbelievable. Cool. cool. So I, I saw the same um, myths and misconceptions coming up again and again in 3,000 conversations, and I would explain the same things again and again, and really Jew in the City was the, I think I can build a better trap. Like maybe I can say this one time, 
and blast it out to everyone as opposed to having 3,000 separate conversations. Um, but one of the um, misconceptions that will come up was I spoke to a girl one time and she said, look, Israel was amazing and I actually want to become more observant, but if I became a religious Jew, I wouldn't be able to work and a career is really important to me. And I said, what commandment is that? That shall not work if you're a woman. I said, there's no such thing. Right. Um, and know. then even more surprising, um, I was interviewed for an article um, by a Daily Beast reporter a few years ago, um, a secular Jewish woman, and she called me as the expert to talk about the Orthodox community and Jewish law, and she wanted to know what part of Jewish law prohibits women from working, and I said, none of it. And she said, that's not true. Orthodox women don't work. And I said, of course we do. And she said, no, you don't. And we went on to have what? this ridiculous conversation where I, the expert, was not actually being trusted for my expert knowledge. And then she said to me, well, fine. So maybe they work. But what do they do, run shops? And I said, yes, yeah, some run shops and some run companies and law firms and medical practices. Um, and finally, the end, she said, maybe my secular bias is getting in the way. Um, so that was really um, enlightening and disheartening at the same time. So oh I felt like goodness. I really wanted to, to tackle that. Um, so that was one misconception. The other misconception was that all Orthodox men are rabbis. And I think this comes from the idea that we associate rabbi with hat and beard. And a lot of Orthodox men, especially on the more right-wing side of the community, um, wear hats and beards just, you know, as their everyday wear, um, even though you need neither a hat nor a beard to be a rabbi, and you can have a hat and a beard and not be a rabbi. Oh, my God. But it's, it's yeah. the association. And the thing is that the, these misconceptions are repeated in popular media. So, for instance, in the Mindy Project, um, a show I used to watch when it was on Fox, Mindy Kaling is walking through the subway, and she passes by a guy with a glue-on beard and payas and a hat, and she says, out of my way, rabbi. So it's like these so silly little ways that, like, these misconceptions are sort of repeated to us again and again. Um, and just sort of a, a funny um, personal anecdote, um, my husband comes from a Lubavitch family, and my in-laws were visiting one Shabbos many years ago, and my Presbyterian next-door neighbor said to me, oh, who's the rabbi I, you know, I see visiting your house? Because she saw the black frock and the beard and the hat, yeah, and I yeah. said, he's yeah. not a rabbi, he works in computers. Huh? So, um, you know, sort of to confront that misunderstanding, we wanted to show Orthodox men in all sorts of different jobs that are non-rabbinic jobs. And so I thought, once we're making a video about Orthodox men and women working, let's show people working, like, at the best jobs, like, the top of the top. So I thought, like, I should get Joe Lieberman in my video. Um, oh, yes. So, so I got him in the video. Um, I wasn't sure how to at first because at that point, Jew in the City was much smaller. I would say that the All-Stars definitely took us to the next level. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of my friends was like, no offense, Allison. Um, a few years ago, we were kind of all thinking, this is going nowhere. I'm like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, so um, I met uh, Jolie Berman at an event in 2013. He was the guest speaker at uh, NJOP. I was one of their social media influencers. I told my husband, I'll get there early. I'll, you know, wow him at the cocktail hour. He'll be in my video. I ended up getting there late. I got totally lost with my GPS. Um, when I arrive, he's on the stage, and he mentions, and after this, I'm heading straight home. And I said to my husband, like, after this speech or after this dinner, he said, see if he sits down. So I waited for the speech to end, and he walked off the stage and to the door. So I get up from my seat, and I run to the door closes to me, and I try to grab him in the hall, but a woman stops me in front of me first and Secret intercepts service. my interception, and he's, like, walking towards the elevator once he's done, I mean, clearly late for his flight, and I, I don't accost him, but, you know, I am uh, energetic, we'll put it, and I basically give him my elevator pitch as the elevator doors are closing. Literally you an elevator pitch. Hand him the card. Uh, my name is Allison Joseph. I run a site to break down stereotypes about Orthodox Jews. We'd love to do a video with you. He takes the card, and he says, sure. Anytime, call my office. I turn around to my husband and I said, we got Joe Lieberman. And he's like, no, you don't. He said he tells that to every crazy person that approaches him at these events. So I call his office the next day. They tell me to submit a, uh, a proposal. We submit it. And a couple weeks later, I find out that we're in the yes pile. Whoa. So once we got Good the U.S. You. senator, yes. Once we got a U.S. senator in the video, then I could approach 
Faye Kellerman, best-selling New York Times yeah, novelist, sure. um, and you know Demetrius Alida and the Maccabees, and um, you know I didn't know then at the time I knew Jamie Geller from Joy of Kosher. Sure. She had this whole career at HBO. She was yeah. on you know The Sopranos and Entourage and The Wire, you know, in a shaitel, um and not shaking men's hands. Um, so we put. She's amazing. I love her. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, and so we put um, 10 people together to talk about all the different things that they could do while being an Orthodox Jew and how, how religion didn't hold them back, how it actually gave their success, success meaning. And um, we sort of last minute, once we decided to release the video, planned a, um, a premiere party, um, and 250 people showed up. Um, we had basically no budget, just a few weeks to plan it. We got the New York Times, the New York Post, and the Wall Street Journal to come. Um, and it was such an amazing success and such a night of inspiration. My husband said, do this every year. Do this. Open up, open up nominations How for the public. How many years ago was this? That was five years ago. So we're now in our fifth year. We're in our fifth year. I'm so excited to be involved, Allison. I think it's- we're so excited to have you involved and really like every year um like every year that we've done it we're like so thrilled and then the next day everyone tells us all the things we did wrong and then oh, we no make changes for the next year and then the next year's like even bigger and better and then like it, but it's exciting because um we are we're proud of what we've done and we're proud of our growth and we're proud of you know the fact that we will have future growth so this year hands down is going to be our biggest best year we've really learned from our our past you know kerfuffles and um we're we have our space in midtown manhattan um on west 46th street it is uh it's sunday evening november 5th it's open Um, to the public so people can buy tickets Yeah, it's, I think people have, like, a little bit of a misunderstanding. Like, can I come to this? Because, like, I'm not invited to the Emmys. Am I allowed to come to this? Like, yes, we want you there. Um, and as I'm telling, you know, uh, our radio show listeners and, you know, the people that follow us online, um, this is our celebration. So we have eight incredible individuals that, I mean, for the most part, you haven't heard of them. You heard of Rochi Fryer. She's gotten a little bit of buzz uh, in this yeah. last year. Could you listen? A lot. We're, we're coming up to our, we've uh, got about 10 minutes left. So I'll list, you want me to list the all-stars? Yeah. Um, so we have Ruchi Fryer, as I mentioned, the first Hasidic female judge. We have Neil Schloss, um, who was the uh, treasurer of Ford Motor Company for a decade. I um, so, I mean, for me, it's just wild that, you know, um, a company that was started by a Nazi sympathizer, yeah, um, I, his money was I being managed just, by it from yet. I literally had that thought as you were saying that he worked for Ford. I'm like, yeah, we we, we won on that one. Exactly. I see that, and I'm like, I'm Yisrael Chai. Um, we have David Mazuz. He is the teen star of Fox's Gotham. So he plays Batman. He plays Batman, um, you know. Uh, he's from Kid? <laughs> who keeps kosher. Yeah, a kid from Kid. He goes to Shell Heaven High School in L.A. Um, you should hear. I mean, all the interviews are done now, so they'll be released at the party. Um, not all of them can appear online. Um, there's security concerns for some of them, like the next one I'll tell you about. But hearing David Mazuz Zoos on one hand tell me that Kiefer Sutherland, who he starred in a former show with, a show called Touch, is like a father figure to him, and then in the next breath telling me that, you know, Judaism is, is what his life is about, this is where he turns to, you know, if there's ever any major life questions, it's how we know how to live, he goes to his rabbis for advice, his favorite subject in school is Gemara, you know, and you would only think you could learn about an oven for two lines, you know, argue about it, but six pages later they're still discussing if it's oh, cut or not. Um, it's just like wow, this is a proud, you know, Jewish kid who's proud of his, his observance and his education, and um, I, kids need more of that. Uh, we have this really cool guy, Sam Raskoff, who grew up from, um, and I, usually most of our all-stars have grown up from, people think that it's um, all uh, Bali Chuva, but um, okay. he grew up religious. He was a Supreme Court clerk, uh, went to Yale Law School, uh, got um, a, what kind of fellowship was it? Ended up in Oxford. Um, then he was put into Iraq to help Ambassador Paul Bremer with the transition government there, and he was sleeping wow. in Saddam Hussein's kitchen. Um, and then after that, Commissioner Ray Kelly appointed him to run this new unit that he came up with after 9-11 called the um, NYPD's Intelligence Analysis Unit. So here was this Shomer Shabbos Jew managing a risk and threat assessment. Alison, we've got to go through the list a little faster. We're running out of time. (laughs) Sure, faster, faster. Okay, fine. Uh, Okay. Uh, I could Uh, could do a three-hour show, but we've got five minutes left. 
Okay, quick finishing up. Freda Ginsburg, uh, the director of legal at Burberry's America. I actually know um, her. I'm so excited that she's on it. She's amazing. I love her. Um, and then we have um, David Adler, who is the uh, author of the Cam, Cam Jansen, Jansen series. He's, I know him he's too. Sold, he's sold only a mere 30 million copies of his books. <laughs> okay. Like um, table for two, like perfect for Pesach, 30 million copies. <laughs> 30 million copies. Um, <laughs> we have um, Ahmed Zayat, who's the, um, the owner of um, American um, Pharaoh, the Triple Crown winner. Um, and who am I forgetting? Chaim Leibovitz, um, who is this Hasidish guy who is now the CEO of a company that is the first biotech company to have a treatment that has been clinically tested um, to help ALS. Oh. Um, people that are uh, that are using this treatment are actually walking and talking again when I, they had I, degenerated I, past I want to keep going with that. I have a friend with ALS. It would be amazing to get that. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Okay, what, is Salt Blinkoff one of them? Or was he uh, Saul Blinkoff is a past all-star, but he'll be there directing our program. Oh, the year fabulous. that Saul was an all-star, he was taking notes about how we can make it better. Literally, like every year we get better. So the next year he gave me the notes and he ran the program last year. I think what people need to understand is that there is an association like I have to go to like my shul dinner or the school dinner. There, look, we have to support the, the tzedakahs that we care about. Right. But this is no feeling of like, oh, I got invited to a dinner. This is like we're going out to this red carpet I'm, amazing event. I'm Bring so- your friends. I'm so um, excited. Get, how to, how get to, dressed up fancy. How do people... Yeah, I know. I have to... Have, I'm going to go... I have to go shopping, I think. It's a great excuse for me to go buy some new clothes. You do need to go shopping. We all need to go shopping. I just got my dress yesterday. And let's um, talk yeah, about it, the Chopped event that we're doing. Let's talk about the Chopped event. So, um, so just to add one more fun element uh, to this event, um, after the program is over and the, the premiere show is, um, you know, each video two and a half minutes followed by a short acceptance speech, boom, 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 and then we're into the after party. Um, food by Nobo, and then the Josh. Chopped event, Kosher Chopped All Stars, which is being hosted and moderated by you, and we're so honored to partner with you on this. Thank and you. Um, we have opened up nominations to the public to, um, you know, be discovered as the next Kosher Chopped All Stars chef. Um, you submit a video, a short video, to info at you in the city dot com, um, and tell us why we should choose you. We have uh, three celebrity kosher uh, judges. We have busy in Brooklyn, Connie Applebaum. We have Aton Burnass, who was on Teen Chopped and Chopped, um, and, and we have Dan- and um, we have Daniela Silver um, right. from the Silver cookbook Platter. Author. What, what, what? And cookbook author. She's a Got and, and cookbook and cookbook author as well. Yes, the silver platter, the cookbook author, two two uh, cookbooks, and amazing. And I went to her house and she cooked the recipes for me, which is really how I I would love if cookbooks could come with the chef. And just this is why I suggested that you come to my house. Yeah, I'm going to come um, to you. I know she did that for me too. She's amazing, Daniela. Big is, shout out to you. We're sending you hugs and kisses. I can't wait to see you. Um, so that's really it. So it will be, um, we're going to choose three, um, people to compete. Um, it really can be anyone who wanted to have a little bit, you know, of a chance to, to, you know, make a name for themselves in the kosher cooking world. They'll get a bag of secret ingredients. The public will watch. Um, and, uh, and then our, our judges will judge. And, um, we're, we're so excited to just really sort of feature the, the best of an observant Jewish life. Right, and and you have to be able to make your own way if you do enter, right? I'm, I'm assuming they have, have to, to make, make your own way. way yes, we, we are not in- flying you in from from Australia or South Africa or Israel right. or anything like that. You must get to the event yourself. And I can just can I add quickly: the event is benefiting a project of Jew in the city called Project Makom. Our content accidentally started attracting people from the Hasidic and Haredi world that were on their way out or had already left, and they came to us and asked us to help them find a, a place to fit in in the Torah observant world. So so we built up this initiative, Project Makom, um, and our proceeds from the night will help us continue to grow this program. We will have 100 full members by the end of this year and, God willing, 200 full members by the end of next year. And if you come out and support us, um, people that are looking to find a place in orthodoxy, if they thought that it was over for them, um, will get a chance. I love it. I love everything you do. I love what you present. I, I love that you are representing Froom Women and get, inspiring everyone with you in the city. I'm looking forward to this event. Uh, you can buy your tickets to all to this uh, red carpet event. event at jewinthecity.com slash events. Okay. Great. Amazing. And Alice. you can enter enter the contest. Uh, send us a, a quick video at info at jewinthecity.com.
Okay, amazing. Alice, I'm going to talk to you a little bit later on today. We've got some more details to work on. More planning. More planning. Woohoo! And now uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Have All a great right. day. Bye. Okay, bye bye. Okay, we are wandering around my kitchen now. That was Alison Jew in the uh, Jew in the city. Um, by the time this all airs, uh, <laughs> it will be very close to the Jew in the City event, and we're going to be announcing uh, that morning when we're going to be. Uh, you've got to be ready to to, uh, um, I guess, chop or cut or cook with us uh, right before the event. So be prepared and be ready. Um, I'm finding a lot, of, a lot of this information live as we speak. Uh, Alison just filled me in a lot of some of the details. I'm late on board and I'm really excited to be part of um, the team uh, at You in the City. Um, and I would like, you know what my favourite team I like to be on? Joy of Gosha. My favourite team. My friends, Shlomi and Chiffra Klein are in the house today, literally in my house. Um, Shefra, how are you? So, how are you? Good. It's good. I'm, I'm really excited real, to be here. I'm, uh, I'm excited. Uh, I should give her a microphone. Wouldn't that be nice? That way our Hello. audience can hear you too. <laughs> yes, okay, I'm going to put right. this down. And today we're cooking some things up, talking and cooking. And talking and cooking. We, it's we, always fun. You know, it's a little bit better cooking in here than in the studio. That way I don't get Nakam studio a big mess. Exactly. And now you could have it for dinner because that's what we're doing. We're making we're gonna have this for a really dinner. awesome healthy dinner. Okay. Well, you know, everyone's watching this air of Shabbos. But we... Well, this is... Uh, uh, first of all, this is amazing fun for Friday night. I'm not even joking. Like, oh, really? Have you done a taco Yeah, do Friday? taco for Friday night. Why not? Taco Friday. Doesn't sound no, as good at as the taco meal, Tuesday. Where's you an do... appetizer? Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. Like, imagine putting a taco by everyone's plate. And we're doing chicken tacos today, but you can do fish tacos. Yeah, I once went to um, someone's house and so, they did fish so tacos nice. for dinner. And it's something that's a great appetizer. That's a good idea. I'm thinking we're going to eat this right now for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Why not? It's, it's getting late. I'm excited. So I'm preheating the pan. Okay. So it's nice and hot. I'm going to put a few tablespoons. Why do you preheat the pan? So preheating the pan, just like you preheat your oven, like right when you put the ingredients in, it gets nice and hot and it's ready to cook. You don't have to wait for that to happen. Okay. First so you're the getting the flavor going right okay. away. So we're going to cook. And then we're going to talk to Shifra about Kosher Fest because Jamie yes. is coming to town Let's with Tamar. Let's talk as we're cooking. Let's talk and cook. Yes, I'm Jamie, some Laura. In. You hear the, the sizzle? Yeah, put the microphone there. Best sounding cookie. Exactly. That's because we preheat it. Oh, and okay. it also makes things go faster. You know, oh, as okay. you're chopping, preheat. Um, so we're sauteing the onions. So we're building up. Let's just um, tell everyone what we're making. We're making some chicken tacos for, for dinner tonight. Or for lunch um, right the now. The recipe is on the website, actually. Joy of Kosher. Joy of Kosher but I think it's on freshfamilies.us, which I'll tell you about in a second. Yeah, I want to hear all about um, that. And so this recipe was made by Tamar. She's a nutritionist. So I it's love really healthy. Her stuff. Yeah, she's amazing. And the cool thing about this recipe is that even in the recipe, when you check it out at freshfamilies.us, why, um, why us? Because dot com was gone? I have no clue. That's a good question. Right. I'll have to find out. But um, when you uh, check it out, you'll see like she made variations for like vegetarians. Like if you don't want to do chicken, she wrote do cauliflower. And like we were saying, like you oh. can do it with fish. Or tofu. Tofu. Like whatever you want. So there's a lot of options. Okay. So we're going to make the chicken tacos and add, we're starting with some onions and peppers. And we're going to let that go for about five minutes. So as it's cooking... We could talk about Kosher Fest and whatever else is coming up. I know that Kosher Fest, it, for me, it's one of the most exciting events of the year. Um, we've got Kosher Food, Jewish Food Media, Monday morning. Right, there's the, so much happening. So much, I call there it the so Jewish Food Trifecta. That's right. And then um, and then Kosher Feast in, is in the evening. Okay. So we've got that. That's right. And then we have two days of Kosher Fest, which is a trade show. Right. And you're going to see the latest kosher. trends and what's going on. And Joy of Kosher is going to be there, as you know. I know. I love. I love the fact that Joy of Kosher has kind of taken over that yeah. whole kitchen exactly. section. Exactly. It's the like back we're there. doing different demos. Um, Jamie's doing. Laura's doing. Tamara's doing. It's all going to be on Facebook, so everyone could follow along with us. Right. So if you are not in the industry and you not, can't attend, right. or if you live somewhere else and you cannot attend, but if you want to attend, by the way, you know about the Kosher Masters competition that we're doing. Right. So why did you explain so to us? Can I just it? say yeah. let's let's what, let me also just say something first because. You know, we just spoke to Alison about her chop competition yes. too. So this is quite similar. Yes. But this is well, the, it's different. speaking it, about, it's just going with the trend in the food and non-kosher world. Yes. It's all about the trend, right? That's right. So these, these cooking competitions on every level are so popular. 
Yeah, well, and it's you, like, people can't get enough of them. A hundred, it's fun to see people compete on any given day. Competitions are fun. Right. And there's so many talented people out there. You know, I mean, just go to Instagram and, you know, Joy of Kosher or any, you know, just follow you on a given day. And like, there's so <laughs> many, no, really, like, there's so many talented people. People have so much to share. And so these competitions really give everyone a voice. Right. And they, they yeah. just keep coming up, no matter yeah. how many you do, you can't keep up with how many are going on yeah, which exactly. is great like from television to youtube to yeah live and each in person. competition is unique in its own way right you know like you were saying like on tv like there's so many different types there's the home cooks there's the chefs like i personally love watching chefs compete like for me that's more exciting like when i did the must be a one i did yes, the must be a right. one um right like uh, back before rosh hashanah and and um alexander rapper i love him he's amazing he's a going to be very very involved with uh kosher feast this year and oh, cool. must be as the soup kitchen and and how how uh we had all these chefs compete and chefs judge exactly so it's just so much fun so this competition is really cool because anybody listening today if you want to come to kosher fest this is your opportunity right if um, you're whoever not submits a, a video you submit a video well not everybody gets in there's so many entries but we're, we're going to have a competition we're choosing our top three Okay. And the top three get to come to Kosher Fest. All expenses paid, so it's oh. a flight and hotel stay. Oh, so you get you you right. you get to fly your people in. That's right. Oh. So like if you're Big in different. Florida, yeah. California, or even like Pennsylvania, and you want to come to <laughs> Kosher Woodmere. Fest, uh, this is a great opportunity. So maybe it's you could really helicopter fun. someone from Woodmere to this Secaucus. We'll give you an Uber ride. <laughs> I'm not you kidding. Miss the traffic. Yes, we'll give you a ride to Kosher Fest if you are the top three and you're coming from Woodmere, for sure. Okay. Boop, I would boop, boop. I would actually join because the prize is $500 and like a bunch of other things. It's so amazing. I would join, but I can't because I work for Joy of Kosher. Right. But it's really fun. It's easy. You could check it out on joyofkosher.com. Um, all you have to do is upload a video like on Instagram, Facebook, or email, whatever. Um, the rules are there. And then... The rules um, are on joyofkosher.com. Yeah. And then you, you know, and then you you never know. You might end up there and you might end up the winner. Right. So it's You know, really it's cool. so fun to watch Jamie. Like, she yeah. is just so animated. And you get to animated. cook with Jamie, which is right. always, always yeah. fun. It's, it's always cooking, fun. I mean, cooking with Shifra. That's <laughs> fun. To, but you get to meet the whole Joy of Kosher team. And yes. I, I, and hang I'm, out with us. Yeah. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, I, I, I actually got to MC it last year. And this year, I'm actually pressures off me because I don't get to enjoy it as much as I like being the judge. So, so you're Jane, the judge. Yeah, you're a judge. I'm a judge. So guys, you're also going to meet Nomi. If you like send oh. your video and you're the top three and you come to Kosher Fest, you're going to meet Nomi too. And We're going to have a lot of fun. And Honey. And honey. That's right. Honey so Applebaum, busy in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And it's really just going to be fun. I mean, Kosher Fest is always fun. Yeah. It's such a fun opportunity. So even if, yeah, if you're a home cook and you don't have the cred credentials to get into Kosher Fest, this is your way That's to do right. it. That's right. But you could be a chef, a blogger, Instagrammer, it doesn't matter. Anybody okay. could sign up. Do, is there an compete. age, seriously? Um, is 18 there an or age? older. 18 or older. So I think it's that was also, a good, you know what, it's a good also question. a great opportunity to like, just get your name out there, you know, show up at Kosher Fest. Well, look at Avi Katz. If you're Katz. like a young chef. Exactly. Like Avi Katz was our winner last year. And um, and yeah, it was it was really I great went, exposure. For I, him. I went to Memphis a few weeks ago. Oh, uh, nice. I followed in your footsteps. He's from Memphis. He's from Memphis. I did a cooking demo for Chabad of Memphis. Oh, that's you did right. it last I loved year, it. and I did so it this great. year. And um, it was amazing because like people from Avi Katz was the winner from last year, but people knew me because I emceed the event, and people were like, oh, you know Avi, you're Avi's friend who was the MC. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> so it was very cool. So that's shout fun. out to Memphis again. Okay, so now that the vegetables are like nice and soft and translucent, I'm gonna. Add Add our chopped garlic it's three cloves of garlic chopped and we're just going to stir it for 60 seconds you don't want to like get your garlic burnt you want to just yeah, release sauteing it for 60 seconds get takes out like um it releases all the flavor of the garlic but it's not going to be like too strong so this recipe um and like so many others were developed by tamar she's the editor of joy and she happens to be a nutritionist Right. So she's a certified and nutritionist. And she happens to be really talented this, chef. Yeah. And this, her recipes are always so yum. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've actually, I, I'm not just saying that, I've actually made a lot myself. Yes. You know, like, I have to tell you something. And, you know, I do a lot of work for a lot of websites. When something I'm looking for a recipe, I really, I start off at Joy of Kosher. Yeah. When I'm looking Joy of for, Kosher is like. Because I know right away it's going to be kosher. Yeah, off there's the over 7,000 recipes. You have recipes from Tamara and Chef Laura Frankel, who is amazing. We actually actually made, we were talking about it yesterday. Um, her fried chicken for the Hanukkah issue. 
Oh. Oh my God, we were going crazy over it. Uh, you guys have I'm to get the Hanukkah. I'm obsessed with fried chicken. It is the best fried chicken you ever had. I but, am not kidding. You so know if you're looking for that recipe, you got to pick up that issue when it comes out. I can't wait. And you'll have yeah. it on the show and maybe exactly. you'll bring me some into the studio. But it's not good when it's not so fresh. But can I just say, the best fried chicken in the in the five towns is from Chimichurri. Yes. And grilled chicken. I like the grilled chicken. Oh, really? So oh, I like fried chicken. Okay, I'm putting salty. this down for just right, a second. I'm going to hold this for the... you so you can talk. So basically, the idea of... I'm putting the chicken in, but if you look at the recipe, which I'm going to put the link, um, I can, I'll send you the link if you want, um, and I'll put it on our Facebook page too. Okay. Um, the rest, there's a link to the recipe, and if you see, there's like a lot of substitutions. Like, if you don't want to do chicken, you can do cauliflower. Like, there's a lot of ways that you can customize this recipe. I love so that. So we're just going to get the chicken going, um, and you're going to cook the chicken for about three to five minutes until it's nice and browned and cooked on all sides. And you see how like it's going to meld with the flavors of the onion, the pepper, the garlic. Um, it's going to be so good. Doesn't it smell so good? Peppers. Peppers. Who's, peppers. Who loves peppers? You know what we, I don't like peppers. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what we call well, them cooked. in Australia? Capsicums. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I just pick them out. Yeah. So, um, so basically the idea of fresh families is that everyone wants to eat healthy. Yeah, everyone wants to feed. Everyone wants to feed their families healthy. And like sometimes it's so overwhelming. Like you see a healthy recipe online and like even if you get a cookbook, it's so hard to organize it and make a plan while you have a family, while you're working, while you're busy. So Fresh Families has everything for you. I think it's like $10 a month. Oh, it's actually a pay It's like thing. a subscription okay. thing. You, you pay $10 a month, but you get... Oh, I'm Full menus. Every Sunday, you get the menu for the week, plus a shopping list, plus breakfast and lunch suggestions. And like, if you have leftovers, every single recipe comes with 100, like full nutrition information. For instance, like this recipe has 35, I think it's 35 um, grams of protein in the recipe. In oh, this recipe. That. So it tells you like, if you want to eat protein, it gives you variations. You also have access to like, a Facebook group where you can like ask Tamar the second you're making the recipe. Oh, Tamar, I have a question. Like, what should I do? Um, Chef Laura Frinkle's also on board to help out. So I you also that. have that support system. Joy of Kosher is so, really a community. I just want to yeah, say that's it's a what community. It is. So the Fresh Families is a community we platform. We need to start working on this yeah. because the, fr the Fresh Families is a community platform that provides you support to. to um, so anyway, you could check it out um, if you like this recipe. You can link on it or follow along with us now. So how do people I'm find out about Fresh pan. Family? They can see it in... So you could go on the website, Joy of Kosher, just search Fresh Family. I'm putting in some chili powder. That's some. That's a lot of chili powder. Um, that's the main source of flavor. And then this is... Tomato paste is also such a... It's a great ingredient. It adds so much you know depth of I flavor got? and umami. Um, tell, and people, tell everyone what umami is. Umami is that like sixth flavor that is really it like it's that flavor of savoriness right like they're like salty the, sweet exactly. sour bitter truffle yeah. oil tomatoes mushrooms steak miso hummus. tomato paste soy sauce all those things are umami it's that like indescribable flavor that like takes things over the top oh my god it's looking so 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 good okay oh so then god. you just saute it together until the chicken is cooked through and why tacos are so much fun is because everybody could customize it to their flavor mm -hmm. Um, you can warm up the tacos in your oven, like a 350, 375 degree <gasps> oven, or you can get fancy and toast oh it on an open flame. Shifra, 10 I seconds per side. Okay, do you want tongs? Oh, that's a good, uh, that's a good call. I was going to like risk my, myself. Um, I would never yeah. let you hurt yourself. Okay, so like 10 seconds per side, so it gets nice and toasted. I've never thought of this, guys. Um, and, this is awesome. And you can actually keep it warm in a silver foil. And one of Tamar's tips in the Fresh Family's recipe is that flour tortillas have unnecessary fat, so she sticks to corn tortillas. Yeah, I also do. So it's I didn't know that. Free. Did you know that, though? Yeah. It's like I learned something new yeah, just by reading that. the recipe. Oh, yeah. cool. I happen to have known that. We make pizza on these. Oh, nice. So I, That's we a good toast it. First, you make it, like put it in the toaster oven okay. and toast it first, and then do the sauce and the cheese and then re-toast it. Okay, cool. Look, it's Tastes getting nice ideas, and toasty. Um, we're going to put it onto our platter. We were going to make some more. Yeah. And while we're heating up the next one, I'm just going to garnish. So the fun thing about taco night is that you can really serve it with whatever you want. Um, and you don't have to add mayo, sour cream, um, et cetera, to the topping. You can really get a lot of flavor. We can do mayo in the uh, sour cream. because Par of sour par cream. Of sour par of cream. sour cream. <laughs> um, par of sour cream. Um, what I was saying is that you can make your own sort of like topping with avocado, which is so much healthy. It's like a healthier oh, you source of You got some fat. avocados? 
um, avocado. This oh. one is, yeah, I got one. Um, avocado, lime, and tomato. Like that's your, that's your like basically salad dressing. And Let's that's where like it. all the flavor comes from. Let's make so it. So I'm just going to I'll cut some that. avocados and tomato. Because um, I'm going to flip this. Okay. I'm going to put this Before the right smoke here. alarm goes off. Um, and then, oh, cool. I'm just going to Right, this is cooked, pages. right? This is cooked, Shifra? Yeah. I'm going to put it on the side. It you know what you could up. probably do? You know how Ortega makes that chili spice packet? Yes. You probably can use that in this because it's got a few other things in there also. But that probably has sugar in it. That's yeah, probably so why they don't want to use it. Yeah, so like additional ingredients that um, – that's the thing that Tamara was talking about. Like one of the crucial parts of the Fresh Family Plan is – to know all the ingredients that you're using. Like clean out your pantry so that everything that's there is is ingredients that you know because that makes such a difference. Like you don't want to have to get like a oh, bunch of extra what, what? calories. Oh, Sorry. talking to myself. You don't want to have talking to like to eat 70 <laughs> extra calories from a store-bought spice blend. You can right, no, easily that's a really do that good at point. home. So that's the idea of what Fresh Families does, which is a really, really exciting for us. Um, it got stuck. Oh, whoops. That. No, I did it. It's you good. did it. I just flipped it. She can use it. So we're going to serve it with some lime wedges. Lime wedges. Okay. We're Put making it really there. pretty on our plate. Okay. A, a squeeze of lime adds so much flavor. I know. I'm, I'm obsessed yeah. with limes. It's, so it's cool. fruity. It's, it's, I call it fruity and citrusy. Put this over here. Okay. Now this we, is our optional topping. You know what I happen to I like? Pi have... um, pi pickled, pickled onions. Yum. So pickled onions is also such a great idea. I know. I learned a lot of pickling from you guys when we had that melee event and when you made the we pickling in those That's mason right. jars. Those were so funny. I love that. So I said, my mum also does a lot of pickling of veggies. I did some radishes the other week. Okay. Now. So here's just a bunch of different toppings that um, we're going to put onto our tacos. So we have our three tacos. Um, if you're making dinner for more, you're going to do more tacos. But for now, this is what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. And we will put our chicken mixture. Wait, are, we, are, we, are we ready to? So let's plate it up. Should we bring it back over here? Oh, let me is this is good? Avocado. This is good, guys? Are these avocados good? I hope so. Because it's so hard to find good avocados lately. Oh, this <gasps> is a good one. Beautiful. When you need someone to pick your avocados, you go to Schiffer Klein. Okay. So I am going to yeah, what's just a, slice yeah. it. Oh, we're not mashing it or anything? Well, it's going to be like, I'm not making a salad. I'm sort of just... Oh, do you want a spoon I'm to... I'm going to spoon it out. I'm going to scoop it she out. Kno she knows my drawers already. <laughs> yeah, I'm very like, I'm very at home here. No yeah. makes everyone feel at home. Oh, so we're just going to scoop it out and we're going to use it as another topping option. And like I said, this is such a great, it's delicious. And it also adds a healthy pop of creaminess so that you don't have to put anything that will add extra unnecessary calories. So that's the idea. Okay, so we have, and then we have some fresh herbs. By the way, this is such a good tip. Wrap your herbs in paper towel. Yeah. Okay, and then it stays fresh, and it will not, it could last for like a week in your fridge. So fresh herbs are also, it's like an, it's like an instant salad. I so love it. So we're going to put some of that. Is that parsley? This is parsley. We have some parsley, and we also have some cilantro. You had me at cilantro. You know what we call it in Australia? You're learning an Australian language today. We call it peppers are capsicum and cilantro is mum what's cilantro called again coriander, coriander. coriander. there That's you right. go i forgot also in south Shami, africa south africa also coriander okay and you put some you can put the fresh herbs here and everyone could sort of like top it so it's so visually appealing it's so fun everybody could customize it um and like i said the recipe is on fresh family i think not i us. think i have a fish tucker recipe on joy of kosher don't i oh cool i think i did it for one of your shivuous editions okay so let's build the taco okay I'm gonna build up three and then um, i'm gonna eat it and it's not yeah. hamotzi nope it's, it's corn tortillas so and it really makes a difference to toast it see Kay's getting hungry way. we've it done it tastes very busy different show. um corn tortillas taste so different when they're just like straight out of the package. You really need to toast it to make, uh, release all the flavor. And also it's, or else it also breaks. Yes, that's right. It breaks apart. Look how pretty and delicious it already Can we get a pic some pictures of that please, peeps? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to put some of this. Some red cabbage. I, a taco night is so much fun also. Like you could have your kids. Oh, thank you. You could have your kids, um, Make their own, like kids love it because they can make their own creations. Like they can do, um, they can do what they like. Like if they don't like tomatoes, they don't have to have tomatoes. If they like um, lettuce, you can do lettuce. And if you're trying to avoid gluten, you can do these tacos and lettuce wraps. 
Like do romaine lettuce and just serve it. What? These aren't gluten free? Corn gluten Not gluten free. I'm just uh, extra carbs. Extra carbs. carbs. Oh, Not okay. Gluten. No, Sorry. I, I was just no, I was just trying Any to. Any of that stuff? No, hundred percent. No. Um, basically, you just put this here. Avos, and then leave that avo free and a squeeze of lime. And there you have it. Okay. Oh, and put this on top. Make it all pretty. Is that cilantro? Cilantro and parsley mixed together. Okay, you know, guys, I'm going to have to be the guinea pig. Okay, you're going to have to be well. the guinea pig. Go for Look, it. Look, if it's a tough job, but it should be me that does it. So what bracha am I making? Shahakal? Shahakal. Okay. Yeah. We had to think there. We had okay. to think there because there's so much vegetables and good for you ingredients. Right. Okay. Baruch atana melcharam shahakoni evin baro. Mmm. Shefa, this is amazing. I'll send to my regards. <laughs> mm. And um, Tamara, I love you. Jamie, I love you. Yeah. Shifra, I love you the most. <laughs> 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 but really, like, I find, like, it's so difficult mm. sometimes to plan a healthy weekly mm. menu. No? Like, thank you. So here you have it. You can get easily, easy planned menus right so on our delicious. website. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else want? Yeah. And you know what was so simple? You saw I went to Gourmet Glot, bought the stuff in five minutes. It took us 15 minutes to prep and it was done. Right. So that's what's also that's, so appealing about making taco, tacos. That's what I love about yeah. this. I mean, granted, we had prepped everything and we had sliced it and all that and washed it all up. But it was really, it was. It was really easy prep. It like took nothing. We're able to make it on a sh on a camera while we were talking. Or exactly. Talking to you guys in the. And while um, the recipe also notes, like it gives you make ahead tips, like as the onions and peppers are sauteing, that's when you can chop everything else up because it took five to six minutes for the onions and right, peppers right. to cook and up. And then you have to break up the. Exactly. So there's different stop. things to do, and you can do it as you're cooking. I would say it's probably a thirty minute recipe. That you could have dinner on the table in 30 minutes. Right. Because we are always flying. <laughs> exactly. Right. And you, while you'd like... rather like sit down and have time to sit with your kids and spend time with your family or just take a break. Right. Take a break. <laughs> wow. That's, so that's an interesting concept. Taking a break. Taking a break. Who knows about it? I know. Right. Yeah. I had a lull in my week the other day. The other week. I'm like, I had like three hours. I'm like, oh, I've got nothing to do. Like I'd kind of done all my... No, I cannot imagine that I, ever happened to you. <laughs> it happened. It happened. I put on Instagram. I'm like, guys. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm bored. What should I do? What's I have not been play? bored in a that? long time. I was so what like, did you do? So I paid a shiver call. Oh. I paid a shiver call. And after that, I'd done all my errands in the morning and I paid a shiver call. Okay. And I kind of had to go to Costco, but that was all I had to do was like 11 in the morning. Oh, Because wow. I, I get up early and I do a lot of work early. Yeah. So I was like really done. And I'm like, okay. I, do? I said, hmm, you know, I love food, right? All the food, all the time. Yeah. So I'm like, I think there's a restaurant in the five towns that I haven't been to. So I went to, the, it's actually a good time to speak. I usually I do this in my intro. I went to this restaurant called Tanami. Yes. Am I saying it right? Yes, I've been there. So good. So fresh. Like, did you, sometimes though, you come and they're making like fresh lava, but not oh. always. And I came once, they were making fresh lava. It was amazing. It was Yeah, unreal. very fresh Israeli food. And I'm like Instagramming away. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah, like I'm talking to the camera. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, he's like, come here, blogger. Yeah. <laughs> and he starts making me all this food. It's insane. That's amazing. Yeah. They're so nice over there. And then, um, and like the idea of fresh herbs was so inspiring when we ate at Allenby. Remember? That was also fun. Oh Another fun restaurant. Allenby. Yeah. Allenby. Allenby. <laughs> I was actually waiting um, to even to talk about Allenby. Oh, okay, Let, fine. Let's so. give it a minute now. Um because Allenby is probably, can I say it, the best kosher restaurant in America? So far. So it's, far. It's really good. Well, I mean, what they're I doing is... Sir, don't get me wrong. They're, it's Cause, it's cause something it's different. Gay, but it's, it's different. So that's what it is. They're introducing a whole new concept. Because it's Israeli food like you never imagined it. But also the vibe, the level of service um, that, they're tr that they're working to achieve is really exciting also. Because that's what I, like, that was also very cool. Completely blown away. Yeah. I've had meals by Yehuda Shola, sh sh some yes. tongue tied, and his amazing Australian wife, the chef's Adina wife. Moss. Yeah. I don't know if she goes by her maiden name or her married name. Oh, okay. If I know you from Australian when you're a kid, you get still called by your maiden you know name. Her, you know her from her. Well, so cool. number one, I'm like 20 years older than you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, all the Aussies, we all know each yeah. other. Look how the Aussies have taken America by storm between Tzamach and Adina. <laughs> like, right. like, And the frock girls were like loud exactly. and proud. Um, yeah, so... Um, 
you know, she's coming on the show. We're doing a whole oh, show very together. Cool. So because you're going to talk it's got, about it. It, it. It needs its own show. Yeah. Right. You know, usually I give a restaurant a couple of minutes and talk about them, but but um, it gets its own show. You can only uh, make a reservation. You can't call up and say, hey, I want to. Right. But they're putting, come. you can do it online. You have to do it online. It's so if you're not cool. tech savvy, you better get on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they were unbelievable. I mean, there's some really great restaurants. Yeah, um, there's lately. really cool things. There's going really on. cool yeah. things in the in the food yeah, industry. Yeah, all over. All and over. you know, we love to cook, and we're in the education business, the food education. Yeah, business. that's right. Like, Joy of Coach is here to educate us and and keeping us on our toes and and also entertaining. Entertaining. I have yeah. to say, Jamie is freaking hilarious. Yeah, she's awesome. She she's getting better and better and better yeah. i mean i know her experience is in media she has worked in her former life right as a tv <laughs> producer she's very trained but yeah she's hilariously yeah, funny like exactly. she's cuckoo to the camera like she um, just like knows how to she's herself and like it's really cool right. and that's why we're so excited about the kosher masters competition like right. i said because that's a way of are you doing demos throughout the day on both so days? we're going to be doing demos throughout the day on both days and one of them is going to be the masters competition um, so that's exciting. And then, what, yeah, what, we're what cooking. Do, you, do we know the um, first Laura's day? doing what she's experienced in. Chef Laura Frinkle is the culinary director of Joy of Kosher. And um, she is doing a demo on, like, restaurant cooking and, like, just stories right, about she's restaurants. She's owned restaurants. She's, she's probably the first person to, to start kosher going gourmet. She had Shallot's Restaurant in Manhattan when I was, like, I don't know, 20 years ago? Or something like I that. I want to say. I forgot how long it was. Charlotte in Manhattan. Yes. I think that was already out here. So okay. Maybe 15 Have years. you ever eaten? Have you eaten there? I I did a I cooking ate. demo at, I went to a cooking demo at Charlotte's when it was still Charlotte's. Okay. When Susie Fishbein did it with um, some chef, oh, Damien cool. Sansonetti, okay. I think was his name. It, the recipes, I think even in one of her books now. And I went to a cooking demo at Charlotte's and after that, it had become solo. Oh, okay. Very cool. But I've I already forgotten it was. But I've been at Shalice in so Chicago. she's going to do a demo. Yeah, so she's going to do a demo, you know, with all her restaurant experience. Jamie's doing a demo on, um, on like, the culinary trends of Israel because Jamie lives in Israel now and she's bringing, like, that flavor to right, Kosher Fest. Right, that's what it's all about now. So, and Israeli food happens to be so trendy right now. Well, James I, Bitter Award James from this year, Michael, Michael Solomon, Solomon. Last right. year, Shia Alon. That's right. Like, every year. Exactly. Like, Maybe Alan B will be next and um, we'll have a Kosher going James Beard. But, um, yeah, so we're doing that. Tamara's going to do her like a healthy family friendly menu oh, that's her brand. Um, and then I'm going to do um, some demos about our Hanukkah issue Hanukkah recipes mm. things like gonna, that going to do fried chicken what going to make me some fried chicken <laughs> I can make you fried I'll chicken another you a time I'll fryer I've got a fryer downstairs <laughs> nobody's going to come to kosher fest with a fryer I'm like yeah. I'm not part of this but can you just make me some chicken <laughs> actually I'll bring it to your house now do you have a deep make- fryer in the house we probably do somewhere. I don't know. I just fry in a regular pot. You don't need a deep fryer to, pot, the, uh, to fry. ST Berkowitz gave Cast me iron one. pans are really good for frying. Oh, really? Yeah, because they conduct heat so evenly. No you know how like you start frying and everything turns black? Yeah. You know, like, like yeah, it's yeah, so easy yeah, to burn. Yeah. So cast iron keeps the heat so steady. <gasps> so that's why mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's really cool for frying latkes, whatever you want to fry. But nobody's oh. thinking about frying now, right? After circus, everyone's so we're jumping the gun. Right, health. but remember, like it's it's right now November, like we're we're hitting November, November yeah. 5th when this 100%. is airing. So exactly. Yeah, we've so got before you know Hanukkah's like coming. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and we got Hanukkah in like exactly. five weeks. So we're in that sweet spot where we need to like eat chicken tacos <laughs> with our ma mouth. But still like in think our brain, about exactly. in our brain, it's deep fried all the way. Yeah. So Amazing! This has been a great show. Talking isn't you in the city, Alison Joseph. Yeah, I mean, I was. I'm always inspired when I listen to her speak. So she, I was uh, just sitting here listening to. Her. It was so interesting and I inspiring, was, and like what she's doing is so great. I was like crying. Yeah, when she was telling her story. Her st- Whoa, that was dramatic. That was like yeah. dramatic, and then just how she's transitioned and how she got all these people to get involved. It's and amazing. I, I just, you know, I didn't know her till very recently. I, I knew. I didn't know her personally. Now I know a bit more personally. Right. And and it's, it's she's just amazing. And I, I look forward to, uh, you know, the event, which is actually coming up. Oh, that's really cool. Like right this weekend. So <laughs> make sure you get your things in today if you want to get picked. Get it in today. That's um, right. Yeah. Because we're going to announce it, uh, I think, Matzah Shabbos. Um, okay, cool. That's yeah, fun. So, yeah. yeah you, you've got your it. videos to watch. I guess I'm... <laughs> 
<laughs> we're very busy. busy. We're busy. Yeah. This is busy right now. I say November is the busiest month. We get the little bit of quiet for up kosher, the kosher, especially and for kosher. kosher. Well, we are fest. kosher. You know, we are right. Joy of Kosher, Aussie Gourmet Kosher, Nacham Siegel Network Kosher. Okay, amazing. Yes. This is Table for Two with Naomi Nachman and Shiv Klein. On the Nacham Siegel Network, we have music uh, sponsored by our friends right up to Lichben, right up to Lichbenching. But first, we're going to hear from Mark Zomit on his Air of Shabbos show. When we wish you all a good Shabbos, we look forward to many more shows together. Have a good Shabbos. Bye.